All right, today is Testimony Sunday. I'm looking forward to this. we got three people that are going to share a personal testimony, five to ten minutes each. Um, you say, well, what is the big deal about a testimony? I think it's very important that each of us give our testimony in this world. You see, your story can unlock someone else's prison. Because you can, a lot of times you don't realize that somebody else has gone through something you have. You feel, we feel like we're so alone many times. Nobody else understands it, but many times we do. I remember a man about 25 years ago, a preacher, he gave a testimony. I'm like, well, that sounds like me. You know, I, I don't hear preachers with testimonies like mine. Like, uh, his name, some of you may know him, his name was Mike Truitt. Yeah, he had a testimony, and I'm like, he's got a testimony something like mine. I'm like, I can relate to that. I mean, I didn't get saved that day or anything, but it made me know that I'm not the only one that things happen to. But what I find is only God can turn a mess of our lives into a message. A test, a t to have a testimony, you've had to been through a test. A trial into a triumph, and a lot of times we can be, go from a victim into a victory. We don't know it. Many times, but we, you say, I didn't know they went through all those things. I had no idea. I would never know about how they went through so many things. If you give it to God, God can transform you. He can take that mess and turn it into a message. He can take that misery that you've gone through in your past, and he can turn it into a, mis a ministry. When I first started in the ministry, I, I was uh, in the youth ministry. The reason I got into youth ministry was I said, I got a story and I, can, I want to help them not to go through the things that I went through. See, that's a testimony. I was, li I was a living testimony. The unbelieving world should see how you live your life. That is a testimony as well. Some people say they don't have a testimony. Oh, I live my testimony. That's a bunch of baloney. Your, your, your life should go along with your witness. It should line up with what you're saying. If what you're saying doesn't line up with what, you know, with your life... Nobody's listening. A testimony is what God has done in your life. The unbelieving world needs to see and hear what we have to say. Uh, we have three people today. Uh, today, I'm, uh, first one up is uh, going to be Vicki Gray. If Vicki, if you would come share with us. I'd say it might be dangerous giving these the three of them a mic. <laughs> <laughs> you have to excuse me. This is not my normal thing. I don't normally speak in front of people. Um, but I did feel when he asked for somebody to do a testimony, it's not just so much about my life, but how God's working through me, through this church, through people, and sometimes that just amazes me. So the verse that I put, kind of based this on was John 15, 5. We're all familiar with it. Um, this is coming from the New International Version. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Mm -hmm. We all know that. We all know that God's with us every day, all day. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, you, you just kind of go through your life and you're thinking, is he really there? Is he really with me? Yeah. But when he really manifests himself and you go, <gasps> you're like, whoa, he really is. We'll back up to June. Pastor Eddie was up here and he's talking about doing a baptism. Well, he didn't have anybody to do baptisms, but it was going to be in July. Okay, I'm thinking, okay, I don't know anybody either. Wednesday, myself and my now daughter-in-law, Kim, were going to get our toes done because we're getting ready to go to Vermont, and I'm going on vacation, and we're all talking about how excited we are, and we're sitting there, and if you never got your toes done, they fill this vat full of water, you put your feet down in there, and it gets all hot and warm, and it feels great, and they're massaging it, and I'm, she's sitting here, I'm sitting here, and all, we're just talking about vacation and excitement. And her conversation switched, and she says, you know, I've been meaning to find out, I want to get my kids baptized. And at that moment, I knew the Holy Spirit entered the room. People said, oh, it's just a coincidence. Because there was like no other air in the room. There was no other people in the room except for her and me. And I knew I switched in my seat and went, what? <laughs> and I was like, and I was like, don't leap too hard. <laughs> You'll scare her away. But I was like, oh, I happen to know somebody. Now, where are we doing it in July? <laughs> and we talked. Little did I know that her ex's husband's 
ex-husband's dad was, who was his name? He said over here. Michael. Michael. He got saved. In the, and she had seen it. She had watched it. She had watched the video, watched him get baptized. So that day, God was in a nail salon, but he knew what was in her heart. He knew what was, I was going to be there with her. But he also, when he heard her heart, he put it in his heart. But he had to have the faith to come forward with nobody in his mind to do that. So we were the branches, and the vine had intertwined. And I just sit back and I sit there and coincidences? No. <laughs> that was way too many coincidences. How did he know on Wednesday I was going to get my toes done because we actually hadn't made the appointment yet. We didn't make that appointment till like Tuesday. So he knew on Wednesday I was getting my toes done. In her heart, she was going to talk about being her kids baptized. And in July, it came to fruition. All three children were baptized. And for me, that was like, heaven rejoiced. And I rejoiced. And I just knew that the vine and the branches had intertwined. Mm. And I say thank you, Pastor Eddie, and thank you to God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit mm. for allowing that to happen. And that's my testimony. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I appreciate that, Vicki. Thank you. Yep, every testimony is important. You think what we have to say is not important, but it is. It is so important. You know what? Uh, sometimes, we, because we record all these things, they go up online. Somebody down the road, might be two years, three years from now, might stumble into this service online and watch it, and they can relate to something that's being said today. God's Word is not irrelevant. It doesn't have an expiration date on it. All right, our next uh, testimony is going to be uh, Taylor. Taylor, Taylor Parks, if you would come up. Mm -hmm. I mean, you say, say, I'm not used to saying that last name. <laughs> Even though you've been married for quite a little, a little while now. Yeah. yeah, you didn't tell me a mic and a camera were going to be involved. So. <laughs> Ta da! Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. When Uncle Eddie first asked me to share a testimony, I have to admit, that I was pretty nervous. And when he followed it with, it only has to be about five to 10 minutes long, I really panicked. <laughs> be honest, we all know that when Uncle Eddie says five to 10 minutes, be prepared to be late for lunch. <laughs> I can promise you that I will not be that long. <laughs> when Uncle Eddie asked me to give this testimony, it was actually an honor and an answer to one of my many prayers. It amazes me how God works. See, that Sunday morning before church, I prayed like I try to do most mornings, and I asked God to draw me nearer to him, to push me and place me to where I needed to be to regain the closeness I once shared with him. Well, God tends to have a sense of humor, because here I am speaking in front of all of you. <laughs> <laughs> I needed this. God knew I did. Every night after I put the girls down for bed, and said their bedtime prayers. I began to write. And in my mind, I couldn't possibly find the words to explain what's God, what God has done for me throughout my life. How he's changed me and allowed me to see and experience all that I have. But I'm going to try my best and start from the very beginning of my journey and walk with him. Mm -hmm. February 14th, 2003. Mm -hmm. That's the day my name became written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Mm -hmm. I was sitting in my bedroom at my dad and Kim's house, probably supposed to be cleaning my room, but I can promise you I probably wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I remember hearing my dad come up the stairs and instantly I knew I was in deep trouble, but not this time. My dad was carrying a small book that he actually carries still in his Bible today, full of Bible verses, illustrations, and a message that changed my life forever. Mm. As my dad spoke to me about God sending Jesus to die on the cross for you and I, I remember thinking how much God must love me. He sent his only son for me. My dad told me that no matter when, no matter where, and no matter what, God would meet me where I was. And that has stuck with me through every moment. Mm. The good the bad, through love, through loss, the 
happy moments and the sad. God's been there. After repeating my dad and saying the salvation message, <clears throat> I felt an overwhelming peace fill every part of my heart, filling every void I never knew that I had. I felt whole and completely overwhelmed by his love. And you know that feeling if you've ever experienced it. Mm -hmm. It's one you'll never forget. I'm going to fast forward a little to 2011 and 2012. That seems so long ago. Those years, they tested my faith. They brought me to my knees, seeking his healing, his guidance, his strength, because I had none left of my own. In 2011, I lost my first grandfather, Pop Pop Butch. He, by God's grace, survived a horrible motorcycle accident. And in the second chance, he regained his faith, his family, and his relationship with Grace, later to pass away from a surgery on 11, 11, 11. Mm -hmm. But I thank God for those second chances. 2012. That year, mm, that was a year. <laughs> I then lost my second grandfather, Papa Brownie. He was a crazy man, if you know him. <laughs> he kept us on our toes and constantly laughing. And on March 10th, 2012, my whole world came crashing down. I lost my best friend. I told myself I wasn't gonna cry. <laughs> My secret keeper, my go-to girl, my little sister Megan. Sitting in the hospital watching Megan's body fail her was probably the hardest moment I've ever experienced during my walk with Christ. And for the first time, I found myself questioning him. Why Megan, the sweet soul who's touched people's lives and spoken to people's heart without ever saying a word. Why her? God, why not me? I take her place. Take me instead. She deserved to stay. But in my weakest moment, full of anger, fear, hurt, and brokenheartedness, God spoke to me. He reminded me that her body, like all of ours, is only a temporary home. That he has prepared a place for us where pain, fear, hurt, and brokenness doesn't exist. And in that moment, Megan took her final breath here on earth and her first one in her heavenly home. As I held her and closed my eyes, I could just picture Megan walking for the first time and taking the hand of our Savior as he welcomed her to her forever home, where I know one day I will see her again. As time had passed and my walk with Christ continued, he allowed me to accomplish many things. I graduated high school on honor roll. I passed my Maryland State Boards for Cosmetology, gained new friends, and had a few relationships. I matured and I grew and learned many things about myself. One thing I didn't ever expect though, was to fall completely in love with a man who had once sat behind me in English class. <laughs> 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 who would tell jokes that weren't funny. <laughs> It was totally not my type. <laughs> but like I said in the beginning, God has a sense of humor. <laughs> that boy, who was the same boy I prayed for, for God send me someone who will love me for me, love my family, but most importantly, love you and know you as his Lord and Savior, is now the man that I proudly call my husband. Through every up and down, trial and tribulation, a happy moment and every moment in between. Craig's been there. He's prayed with me, but most importantly, he prays for me. He tries every day to be more like Christ. He puts our girls and I before himself, works countless long hours to prepare a bright future for us, and he's traded his high school jokes for dad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> but I wouldn't trade a thing. <laughs> I pray for this, all of this. God's given me this life that I once dreamed of. And here I am at 26 years old, 
a daughter, a wife, and now a mommy, to two of the most beautiful blessings I've ever seen. Hensley and Raylan, the two little girls who have taken my breath away from the start. They got knitted together perfectly in my womb, who have allowed me to see life so differently. I remember praying for them too. God protect them while they grow safely within me. Keep their heartbeats strong and their kicks continuous. <laughs> and here they are, soon to be a year old. Where is the time gone? Born at five pounds and four pounds, these girls have never stopped amazing me. From crawl crawling to patty cake mm -hmm. to walking in snuggles, they're a constant reminder of God's amazing love. I've never experienced a love like the love I have for them. And to think God loves us more than that, how amazing. I love this life that God's given me, who he saved me from becoming, the family I have and the ones that I've gained. The purpose behind every mountain I've climbed and valley I've crossed has been to better me as a Christian, a wife, a mom, and a daughter. And in closing, Joshua 1.9 says, Go be great, strong, and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord will be with you wherever you go. Mm -hmm. All right, I appreciate that, Taylor. Thank you so much. Always good to hear words of encouragement and see what God is doing in someone's life. All right, uh, last but certainly not least, uh, we're going to have Mike Passworth come up and share with us. Mike? You'll <laughs> <laughs> do fine. You'll do fine. <laughs> this is different up here. <laughs> yeah. This is the short of the sandwich. <laughs> the truth is, uh, not my paper in the world. Right mm. <laughs> down all the way I've been doing. Truth is, uh, it's endless. Mm. The things that God's done for me in my life. Mm. And, uh, where to begin, where to end, we just don't know. Kind of wing it, as you can see. Mm. Um, many don't know, I guess, some do, when I was young, uh, I was paralyzed, couldn't walk, couldn't really move too much, uh, getting into beret syndrome, uh, it was pretty rough, now I'm getting older, you know, eight going on 40. I'm, uh, some of the memories are fading, but I still remember some things when I was younger, I remember uh, my mom, my mom opened my presents and stuff for me on Christmas Day. I remember my dad lying around in a little cracker thing. I remember uh, being uh, brought back that little church over there, mm -hmm. that little pews and stuff in there. Mm -hmm. Still remember snow. I can still smell it. Mm -hmm. And uh, they laid me down in the back. I used to have people come and pray over me. Baby Dunzel. Mm. And sadly, all them. Real prayer warrior. Mm. Long story short, as you can see, I walk. Yeah. Mm. They didn't know nothing then. They didn't know nothing about it. They didn't know how to walk again. Probably figured I wouldn't. And I walk. Uh, what did the doctor say, Mom? He said it was a higher power. And you couldn't take no credit for it. I mean, doctors nowadays, you think to say that, scared mm -hmm. to them. Uh, fast forward through time, I guess, a you know, kid growing up, went through some things at home. Uh, I'm a firm believer that uh, God puts certain people in your life at certain times in your life. And uh, maybe steps out, allow some things happen so you can learn something once in a while. Uh, 
uh, a little uncomfortable, but you know, went through divorce, you know, they dealt some kids and stuff and things. Without that, became an amazing man right there. Billy Rap. You talk about filling the void. Mm. It's an amazing man right there. Mm. I'm not gonna cry too, man. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a little dusty in there, is it not? Right, Kelly? Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but he's taught me a lot. He's done a lot for me. Uh, stepped in where others wouldn't. Uh, wouldn't know anything about changing oil or brakes on a car or anything like that. He would take the time out to help anybody and do anything. He would cut grass at a church he didn't even go to anymore. Uh, amazing. Mm -hmm. And then I'm grateful that, uh, well, somebody saying it there. Mm -hmm. Well, Mary Wonder Woman, I got that going for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. No. Uh, you talk about game changers in life, there's a lot of game changers. Certain people, certain times. She was a big game changer. My niece. My oldest niece for kids, she was a game changer. I tell her sometimes now. But uh, she's the first time I really started feeling the shame of things I was doing, my language, things like that. It really, I didn't stop right away, but it made me think. Um, <clears throat> didn't want her doing that kind of stuff. It's like, you know, what kind of influence am I on this child? And she. She's one of those kids that's been through almost everything and seen everything. Come up with a good head on shoulders. I like to think I had something to do with that. And uh, ultimate game changers for children. No doubt about it. As you guys now know, nothing like it. the feeling of unconditional love is real. I didn't ever believe in that love first sight stuff and all that anyway. Y'all look at that oldest child, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing I wouldn't do. Uh -huh. Then the second one came. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> She's a barrel full of fun, I can tell you. But, uh, you might need your shepherd's hook. You said five, ten minutes. <laughs> she, um, free spirit personified. Uh, so many different things with them kids. I'm so grateful for. I think one of the best things I am is that when my niece has started and my wife started pushing me in different directions and my oldest was born, and it started making me think, how do I want her to be? Well, don't want her to be like me. Don't want her to be doing the things I was doing. I can stand up here and tell you that I've seen, been a part of, done, and things that are bad. I lost my way for many years. And my dad always preached about mustard seed and stuff. When you were young. So I was in church when I was young. I was in church a lot. Mm -hmm. Mom could tell you I was in church every time there was church. I was there. Mm -hmm. And uh, lost my way. And uh, the mustard seed grew over time. And fast forward to kids and everything being born. Started feeling different about my perspective, my responsibility. And uh, I remember one day I was in my living room, kitchen living room, trailer was all together, one thing, you know. And of course my oldest one was there, or baby or whatever. And uh, I think I was about to I was thinking I was about to lose my job. Uh, all I could think about was my kid, you know. Mm. What am I gonna do? I broke. Mm. First time in my life, of all the things and fights and stuff I've been a part of in my life, I broke. I 
Don't go into a whole lot of details, but I want my meat. Mm. I got up from my knees. Everything felt different. Mm. I didn't have no worries, nothing. It was all gone. Never felt that way. All the drugs and alcohol and stuff. I ain't got nothing on God, I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. um, and then things started changing. Uh, long story short, I ended up working for a propane company. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> in crawl spaces, you know, all the tests. But the opportunity. And one thing I would do is I would always work. And we all did faithful at work with Dad, and I would put in work. One thing I've always been, I'm a thoroughbred horse, I'll work. And, uh, do all these tests and stuff. I'm able to provide a better life for my family, which means a lot to me. And uh, again, my years of hard work and stuff got me nowhere where I was. And then uh, my aunt and uncle knew I was trying to change, trying to find something better, and went to my cousin. And my cousin had a little bit of influence, not like big boss or anything like that, but he just could talk to people. And he doesn't vouch for anyone, especially in the back. He vouched for me. I got my foot in that door and I never stopped and looked back. Mm -hmm. I got all these certifications and all this stuff and I got a long mm -hmm. way to go to learn. And uh, maybe one day I'll know as much as you guys. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. But uh, mm -hmm. I'm able to provide for my family now. Mm -hmm. uh, couldn't picture that before couldn't picture a lot of things before. Mm -hmm. And uh, another blessing that I had to say is when I was younger, I was able to uh, hang out. I was able to be, I was able to meet my great grandparents. As a matter of fact, one of them lived right next door. I used to sit there and wait for the school bus every morning, mom went into it. Mm -hmm. And uh, she'd give me grapefruit with sugar. <laughs> uh, love the sugar. Mm -hmm. So I was able to do that. Now my, my children, mm -hmm get to do the same. Mm -hmm. So that means a lot to me. Mm -hmm. uh, my grandparents, the epitome of strength. It was only a couple years ago, my wife called me talking. She's running a line in the crawl space. Yeah, I will call you out one more, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it's such a blessing to have wonderful people in my life. Mm -hmm. And people and influences from things and people that you never see. Like Luke was saying, a song and light switch went off. Mm -hmm. God can use anyone, good or bad. You can be an atheist. He can still use you. Mm -hmm. You might not know it or agree with it, but you, you might get used by God. God can do some crazy things. And I guess that's why he's the almighty. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm just grateful for everything in my life. When I say that, sit back there, I say it almost, I guess, every Sunday. Mm. Almost like it's generic, you know? But I mean it. Mm. A lot of game changers in my life. He is the ultimate one. Game changer. Mm. Yes, he is. And uh, I have a home. I have a family. I wake up every morning. I'm able to provide for my family. I'm able to come to church. Some places you can't do that. And in my opinion, um, your head's starting to swell a little bit, so I'll keep this part short. But, um, <laughs> especially when your brother starts speaking. <laughs> but um, we got a pastor that's awesome. I love hearing him speak, you know. It's, it's nice when I can relate to somebody. I don't have the, it, this is no offense to others, try to say this carefully, but I don't have the high and mighty, we don't have the high and mighty preachers that sit up high and have other people speak. And, you know, everybody's wearing fancy robes and gowns and almost floats across the floor when they talk. We got a pastor that stands right here in front of you. And he'll tell you quick, he's, he needs work where he came from. It means a lot. 
When God says, come as you are, he'll meet you where you're at. Mm, that's something. But, uh, time's up. <laughs> no, uh, I'm just grateful for everything in my life. You know, everything that happens, happens for a reason. And I like to think that he's also used me to help others in that aspect. Maybe I'll never see those results. I preached that a couple times recently. But uh, the influences we have, you know, the pastor says go be in church. Mm. You know, I need work. I'm not going to lie to you. I stand right here in front of everybody here. Mm. If I get really mad, I still have problems with my language sometimes. I have a problem with my crude sense of humor sometimes. I get caught up in some bad jokes sometimes. And I'll laugh. Now, I came a long ways because I was... I'd make Richard Pryor sick at one time. But uh, he, he's brought me a long ways. And I always uh, like to tell my, my children and my nieces, you know, there's no real shortcuts in life, but there is one. If anybody tells you shortcuts in life, they're probably lying to you. But there is one shortcut in life, and that's listening and learning from the mistakes that I've made and the ones around you had made. Because if you don't make those mistakes, you've already gained some steps ahead of where I'm at. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I, I pound that as hard as I can in, into my, my family. Um, it's, it's amazing where I'm at now compared to where I was, where I could have been, and where a lot of my friends and, and people that I've been around are. And um, I pray for those guys. I pray mm -hmm. for all of them. Um, but... Uh, I'm thankful. Thankful for everybody in my life. Mm. And everything is done. So with that, I guess that's it, Pastor. Um, I could go on for forever, <laughs> but... Uh, Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> As you can tell, they love my story. <laughs> <laughs> well, praise be to God, you know, it's good to hear what others have gone through and what God is doing in their life. I want to give you a couple of scriptures, though, because it ain't what I say. It's what God says is more important. In the book of Mark, chapter 5, verse 19, it said, Jesus said this, Now go home to your family and tell them everything the Lord has done for you and how merciful He has been to you. It is good that we don't keep our salvation to ourselves. Many people you meet in life, you find out later they were Christians and you would have never known it. Because they don't talk about God. I'm not telling you to go out and hit anybody over the head with what you believe. That's not what I'm saying. But when there's an opportunity to glorify God and let them know what has happened here, you really should. You really should when you take that opportunity. In the book of Psalms, chapter 22, verse 22, it says, I will praise you to all my brothers. I will stand up before the congregation and testify of the wonderful things you have done. God has done wonderful things. We take them for granted. We don't see them. We don't understand them. With all the technology in the world, we pass it off as that many times. I'm telling you, God is in the miracle work and business. He is not done. He is not done. He's not done in your life. He's not done in mine. Until we draw our last breath, His grace continues to flow. And one last verse I want to share with you. In the book of Daniel, chapter 4, verse 2, it says, I want you all to know about the miraculous signs and wonders of the Most High God and how He has performed, performed them for me. You see, what God did for me, He can do for you. What God did for somebody else, He can do for you as well. Sometimes we feel like, well, God has done with me. He has not done with you. You're still breathing. You're still here. God has a purpose for you. That's what we're going to be talking about in the next sermon series. God has a purpose for you. He is not done with you. I am telling you, if you're here today and you're not saved, God is speaking into your life in ways that you may not understand it right now. He, there may be things that you're going through right now, but I'm telling you, God wants to see your life change for the better. He is not done with you yet. I want you to do me a favor. If everyone would just bow their heads and close their eyes just for a moment. See, this is between you and God. It's never been between me and you. It's not between you and anybody else. It is between you and God. If you're here today and you're not saved, you see, there's nothing to be ashamed of. 
Everyone has to have that day of salvation. I know when mine is. Today is yours. That's a wonderful thing. Nothing to be ashamed of. Everyone has to have that day. If you've never had that day, you're not saved. You can't be just so good of a person that somehow you just automatically going to go to heaven. None of us are like that. See, we all got the same problem. We're all descendants from Adam and Eve, and we got a sin problem that has to be resolved, and only Jesus can resolve that. Today is your day of salvation. With every head bowed and every eye closed, maybe you like to slip your hand up and say, that's me, I need to be saved today. Would there be any? Thank you for those hands. Would there be any others? Any others? Say, I need to be saved today. If God is speaking into your heart, He's doing it not to punish you, but to see your life change and see better. See your life better. For those that rose their hands. See, there is no perfect prayer. A lot of times we look for this beautiful prayer and God won't hear my prayers. He won't even understand my prayer. But I assure you, He does. He knows your heart. If you would just repeat after me, say, Dear Lord, forgive me of my sins. Be Lord of my life. Help me. You see, with that prayer, you see, if you said that and you meant it in your heart, God is looking for sincerity, not beautiful words. If you said that in your heart and you meant it, you were born again. Praise God.